Hey everyone, welcome to Jim ZV Adventures. Today we're going to examine the methodology I use to blast bunk by looking at a video titled Bonkers Billion Dollar Big Battery is Broken Already from our good friend M Guy in Australia. Here we go. I'm sure M Guy is a fun guy to be around. Fun guy. <laughs> fun guy. We all know where a fun guy grows. <laughs> anyway, this is what I'm talking about. In this particular video, he is referencing a Sky News article that breathlessly claims the Warata Super Battery has suffered a catastrophic failure and that this throws the entire coal to renewables transition into disarray. The battery? Hardly. Strong word, so let's do what I've always done here, dig into the facts. I will go to the actual engineering reports, the AEMO data, and statements from people, the people that built it, own and operate the thing, and see what's really happening. So first, the facts. The Warata Super Battery is an 850 megawatt 1,680 megawatt hour grid scale battery in New South Wales, Australia, one of the biggest in the entire world. During final commissioning in mid-October of this year, one of the three high voltage step-up transformers failed catastrophically. That transformer is now scrap and it must be replaced. A second transformer was temporarily taken offline for precautionary testing and later determined to be okay. Here are some important points that somehow didn't make it into the headlines. There was no fire. There was no explosion. There was no damage to any of the battery modules themselves. Nobody was hurt. And the battery continues to operate right now at around 370 megawatts, roughly 40% capacity, and is still performing its absolutely critical System Integrity Protection Scheme, SIPS, role for the New South Wales grid. So yes, full power operation is delayed until at least May of 2026 because giant 400-ton transformers aren't something you can grab off the shelf at Bunnings. That's Walmart for us Americans. Global lead times are 12 to 18 months at the moment. Good thing they already had one on order, so as a spare. So you might be wondering why on earth it takes a year and a half to get a new one. Well, these aren't the little box transformers on a power pole. These things weigh 400 tons. They're custom built for the exact voltage and power rating, and right now the entire planet is short of them. Post-COVID supply chains are still messed up five years later. Copper and special steel prices are still through the roof. And every country in the world, from China to Canada, is ordering hundreds of these things all at once for AI data centers, new solar farms, and a few grid upgrades. Australia isn't special. The same thing is delaying coal plant repairs and gas plant projects all over the world. Now here's the part that is worth pausing on. This exact same type of transformer, oil-filled, high-voltage step-up transformer, is used at every single coal plant, every single natural gas plant, and pretty much every large solar and wind farm on the planet. Transformer failures happen. Sometimes they're spectacular. They happen on coal plants all the time. When a transformer blew up at a Liddell coal station a few years ago, nobody ran around saying, coal is finished. When Bayswater lost a transformer in 2022, nobody declared the entire fossil fuel industry a failure. Yet, when it happens on a battery project that is literally built on the ashes of the old Munmora coal plant, suddenly it's proof that big battery storage don't work and the whole renewable transition is in disarray. 
And just for fun, the Munmora coal plant that used to sit on this exact same piece of land ran from 1967 until it was shut down in 2012. In its entire lifetime, it had multiple transformer failures, boiler explosions, and even a major fire in the 1980s. Nobody ever called these proof that coal doesn't work. Now we put a battery on the same site and one transformer goes pop during testing and suddenly it's the end of civilization. Uh, funny how that works. Look, nobody's pretending renewables are perfect. On this channel, we're always the ones pointing out the real headaches. How can it take 10 or 15 years just to build big power lines? Look at the HumeLink and VNI West projects in Australia. Both over 10 years in the planning and still not a single tower in the ground. How we still don't have cheap ways to recycle old turbines and solar panels. South Australia just opened its first big solar panel recycling plant this year, but they're still shipping most old blades to a landfill in Queensland. That's not good. We call those problems out constantly. That's the job of responsible social media. But when a regular transformer fails, the exact same kind that blows up on coal and gas plants all the time, suddenly it's proof that big batteries are useless and the whole renewable plan is falling apart. Let's just say that feels like a bit of a stretch. And that's how we destroy FUD, or in the case of Jim's EV Adventures, we blast the bunk. M-Guy bunk. Sky News bunk. The fact is, the Warlata Super Battery is still online today, still earning revenue, still keeping the lights on in New South Wales, and still proving that batteries can provide the kind of system strength service that retiring coal plants used to give us. When it's fully fixed, and it will be, it will be able to power close to one million homes for two hours, or act as a gigantic shock absorber for the entire state grid. Even at 40% power today, the battery's already stopping blackouts. In August and September this year, it responded in milliseconds during a couple of big frequency dips when other generators tripped, doing exactly the inertia job Ring and the other coal plants are getting too old to do reliably. AEMO has publicly thanked it multiple times in their quarterly reports. So while they wait for a new transformer to sail over from Korea or wherever, the thing is literally out there earning its keep every single day. So yeah, real setback. Embarrassing delay? Sure. Battery broken already? and the renewable transition in disarray? Come on, the facts just do not say that. FUD, dead. Bunk, blasted. So the next time you see a screaming headline claiming a billion dollar green project failed in record time, just remember this story. Warata Super Battery is not broken. It's quietly doing exactly what it was built to do saving the grid, crushing blackouts, and keeping its hands out of taxpayers' pocket. The only thing that is actually broke this time was the clickbait. M-Guy and Sky News clickbait. And if you're sick of this kind of panic brought to you by this type of fun guy and want straight facts, the good, the bad, and the engineered truth, join me here at Jim's EV Adventures where we blast bunk regularly about everything green, including cars. Hit the subscribe button. This story is an example of how we bust clickbait and get to the truth without the drama. So thank you for watching and I'll see you out there or somewhere along the route from point A to point B. See you later.